No. <laughs> Did you need me for something? Because I'm busy. This dish is the dish that made it onto the cover of my book, so you know that I must really love it. And it is a humble dish of a few ingredients, but kind of greater than the sum of their parts. And really the lesson here is that you should be cooking bone in, skin on chicken. And this can be a breast, it can be a thigh. As long as there's a bone in it and there's skin on it, you're good to go. Um, I'm gonna use breasts here, and I use them because they're a little bit meatier, a little bit plumper. If you cook a chicken breast properly and the skin gets really golden and crispy and the inside stays really moist and juicy, it's kind of the best meat that there is. Whenever I cook a larger piece of meat, and yes, I'm counting these large bone and skin on chicken breasts as a larger cut of meat, I like to season them with salt and pepper before I do anything else. In this skillet, we're cooking the chicken, and from there, a lot of fat is gonna render out. A lot of golden brown bits are gonna happen in the skillet, and that is gonna be stuff that we wanna eat. A good way to do that is to add vegetables or something like that, or liquid to the skillet. We are gonna do both. We're gonna add a lightly pickled onion to the skillet. Because you're kind of pickling the onion beforehand, it's gonna retain a lot of its acidity, and it'll just get you a richer, kind of deeper flavor than if you were to just kind of squeeze lemon at the end and saute red onion. And for this, you could also use a shallot if you wanted. I like the red onion because it's kind of sweet and it looks real pretty. And then on top of that, I'm just gonna season with more salt, some pepper, and then about two tablespoons of lemon juice, which is approximately one lemon. And uh, you can set this aside until you're ready to cook your chicken. The second thing we're gonna cook in the skillet are olives. The best way to pit olives is to just crush them. You're crushing it until you hit the pit and then you can kind of just fish it out. It's almost like pitting cherries. Again, a very therapeutic kitchen practice. This is also a great task for someone else. Do you want me to hit it uh, Yeah, that'd be great. When you are searing any type of meat, but especially anything with a skin like chicken, you really want to make sure that your pan is as hot as possible, otherwise it's gonna stick. You can tell your oil is super hot when it starts to be really nice and shimmery like this guy. And it'll smoke a little bit, but that's fine. You want to press down almost immediately to make sure that that skin gets in nice, nice contact with the skillet. So while my bird is doing its thing over there in the skillet, I'm gonna make a mini little herb salad to go on top of it. I'm gonna do some nice parsley and some dill because chicken and dill go so well together and I think that it's a really underutilized ingredient. And for this, I'm a huge fan of just like nice, leafy, spriggy things rather than cutting it fine. I think it looks nicer, and I also just like the way it eats. I'm gonna put my chicken now. Our chicken is ready, and I can tell because it's all over evenly golden brown, and when I press it with my hands, it feels like medium rare meat. It should not be soft. If it's soft, it means it's still raw, and it should not be too firm, because if it is, that means it's overcooked. I am just going to pull my chicken breasts out of the skillet and let them rest for a little bit, so I can cook everything else in the skillet. And everything else here means these crushed olives, and then about a half a cup of water. And that's so I can use all those brown bits at the bottom as a sauce. So already when you add the water, you can see that all those bits kind of, they scrape themselves up really. But to help them along, use like a flat wooden spoon, scrape them up. And then along with the olives, I'm gonna add a bunch of sumac. And that's gonna simmer along with that liquid and the olives to make a really kind of tangy, savory, chickeny sauce. While this cooks, I'm gonna add the chicken back, skin side up. So it just kind of finishes cooking and then any residual juices from the chicken breast resting kind of fall back into that sauce. Now my liquid is pretty much, you know, almost all the way reduced. So I'm gonna take it off the heat. And I'm gonna add all of my pickled red onions and then any liquid that's also in there. I'm gonna pull these uh, over here so I can slice the chicken breasts. And if I were using chicken thighs, I might just serve it straight from the skillet and let people deal with it themselves. But because uh, these bone and skin on breasts, this is actually like a two person serving, I'm gonna slice it up. 
When you're pulling a chicken off the bone, especially the breast, you kind of have to just feel for where the cartilage meets the carcass. You basically just want the breast and then have the bone. So when you're cutting the chicken breast or any piece of meat really, you want to keep it skin side up so it stays really crispy and it also just slice a lot nicer that way too. You want to just kind of spoon this over. Make sure you get some of those pan juices. And then we're gonna finish with that herb salad. And you want kind of a lot of herbs here. It's a pretty rich dish with all that fat and pickled onion. The herbs are really nice to just kind of cut through that. Cool. And there it is, the cover dish in real life, in real time. Okay, I'm not gonna pretend I'm alone here. That's a little weird. Everybody, come have some chicken. Sean, I see you. Oh, I put a shirt on. <laughs> okay, I know, here, I'll move this. Yeah, you guys can come around here. Feel free to, you know, ooh. I had so much fun making these videos and an even better time writing my book, Dining In, available wherever books are sold.